in Florida, it's Inside Out, Summer Edition. Today, George Foreman kicks back and gets ready to catch the sights and sounds of a Walt Disney World summer. J.D. Roth gives a sneak preview of the new Disney Cruise Line, including an exclusive look at how it all comes together. Brian Leary suits up for adventure to explore the depths of Epcot's living seas. And teen reporter Talia Osteen shows us what's extra special, amazing, and way inside out. It's a splish splashing, cool refreshing, double dipping summer edition of Inside Out. Now, here are your hosts, George Foreman, J.D. Roth, and Brian Leary. You know, when the weather gets hot, what better way to cool off than a blizzard? This is Blizzard Beach, one of three water parks right here at Walt Disney World. And since today's show is about Disney at sea, we're going to check out everything, and I do mean everything that's water-related, right. including Disney's new cruise line and Disney's very own private island in the Caribbean. Ooh. Sure feels like paradise to me. This is the perfect way to spend a hot day. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. You know, guys, there's a lot of things to do here, so I think I'm going to take off and get busy, all right? Okay, okay. JJ. All right, bye-bye. See you later. See you later. I just climbed all the way to the top of the coolest water park at Disney World, Blizzard Beach. Look at this place. It's been said that a freak winter storm dropped a mountain of snow on this little corner at Disney World. Disney responded by building Florida's first ski resort, but then temperatures soared. As the snow melted, this playful alligator slid down the slopes, inspiring Disney to convert the whole place into a water park. Is it true? Well, there is evidence of that alligator's wild ride. You be the judge. The high point of this place? Mount Gushmore. The most exciting rides in the park start on the slopes of this mountain. There's the double-humped slush gusher. It drops 90 feet through a snowbank mountain gully. The king of the hill is the summit plummet, where you drop over 120 feet and reach speeds up to 60 miles an hour. The brand new downhill double dipper event pits two challengers together on parallel racing surfaces that are so fast you feel like you're going airborne. Let's meet our challengers. What's your name? Kyle. Where are you from, Kyle? Canada. Canada. Good luck, all right? Let's meet our other challenger. What's your name? Billy. Billy, where are you from? USA. All right, so we got the USA against Canada. You can see up there some recording devices to see who gets down the bottom the fastest. You don't want to touch the ground at all. Here we go. On your mark. Get set. Go! All right, they're off. You can see by the clock right there, Canada's taking the lead, but USA's hanging in there. Canada wins by a mile. What a great race. And after a day on the slopes, the only thing left to do is go body surfing. Let's go. Surf's up. Woohoo! All right. Smack dab in the middle of Walt Disney World sits a hidden treasure, Discovery Island. And actually, we're lucky enough to be taken on a personal boat tour of Discovery Island by Don Nason. And Don is the educational manager here. Don, can you give me a little history of the island? Sure. Discovery Island is the only accredited island zoo in the world. From the guest perspective, we're out here in the middle of the lake. You get a boat, you cruise across to this lush tropical island, you meet up <laughs> all the tropical animals and it's just wonderful what kind of animals most of these are exotic species from around the world but they are island dwellers do you think we can get up close oh you know what i bet we could we're gonna land wow. ah! <laughs> welcome to discover island wow this is so beautiful how long did it take to get it to look like this oh about 20 years we're still working on it 
Okay, so it's summer, so what's different about the island in the summer? Ah, uh, it's nesting season for a lot of our animals on Discovery Island, like our flamingos. Not spring? No, some do like the spring, but others like the summer, and flamingos, that's when they want to hatch their babies, usually oh, around the end of June, beginning of July, somewhere in that time, Ryan. They are so beautiful. Now, why do their knees bend backwards? Ah, because that's not really a knee. That's more of an ankle. If you look at the way that it's bending, it bends backwards. Yeah. And if you bend your knee, your knee bends forward, so it's an ankle. Flamingos aren't endangered, right? No, these are not. These are American flamingos. But the Galapagos tortoise is. Yes, it is, absolutely. It has a lot of problems, mainly habitat loss. Well, let's go look let's at it. Let's go look at it. This is BG, and he's a Galapagos tortoise. He's about 40 years old, weighs about 600 pounds. And will he get bigger? Yeah, he'll continue to grow his entire life. When he reaches his old age at about 200 years, he'll probably weigh about 1,300 pounds. He's That's gonna... unbelievable. He looks so prehistoric. He really does. He really does. And he actually dates back to the time of the great dinosaurs. Oh, he is so great. He's a good boy. This place is wonderful. I, you know, had heard about Discovery Island, but I never knew how special it was. Thanks so much, Don. Oh, you're welcome. I think I'm going to go swim back to shore. Cool. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. At Disney World, there's a lot of wet things you know about. But sometimes the things you don't know about are just as interesting. Did you know that the Living Seas main tank is one of the largest single tank aquarium facilities in the world? At 35,000 square feet, Spaceship Earth, also here at Epcot, could fit inside the aquarium with room to spare. Did you know that in Catastrophe Canyon here at the Disney MGM Studios, over 70,000 gallons of water dumps over every helper shuttle? Look out! Did you know that at the land at Epcot, they're working to preserve our ocean's resources by farming fish in tubes like this? And you can see it on the tour. Did you know that there are real live sharks swimming with the guests right here at Shark Reef? But don't worry, they shouldn't be too hungry. They're well fed every morning at 9.30. And did you know that if you put all the water slides together here at Typhoon Lagoon, they would be twice as long as the Empire State Building? Bet you didn't know that, but you do now. Hey, J.D., how you doing? Hey, I'm having an awesome time. <laughs> I love this place. Have you seen George, though? No, I can't find him anywhere. I've been looking all over the place. Uh, I'm sure he's working hard. Uh, oh, you shouldn't have, but... Thanks. <laughs> ah, what a life. All right, it's Q&A time. How long do you think it took to transform Cinderella Castle into the 25th anniversary castle cake? Was it 11 days? 11 weeks? Or did it take 11 months? You'll find out when we come back with more Inside Out Summer Edition. We'll be right back with Inside Out after this. <laughs> Weekend afternoon movies are Disney distractions. Today, these appliances have been left alone for far too long. Don't be a wet blanket. Their master's gone away, and they don't know where. But they're gonna find him. That's how much they care. We're gonna go out and find the master. To the city? Yeah, no matter what. An adventure is in store to find the master they adore. We did good, didn't we? On Disney Distractions, it's the Brave Little Toaster. Today at 425, 325 Central on Disney. Tonight, Zero to Hero Weekend, celebrating the spirit of Disney's Hercules, goes out with a bang with losers that become legends in two big movies. Who wants to do this thing right? We've got some nice kids who are kind of chunky. You're going to be hanging with some pretty cool cats. We've got Pee Wee, who's small and spunky. I know you are, but what am I? And with a little chunk. I'm a man. And a little spunk. Ah! They become heroes like that Hercules hunk. What? Don't miss heavyweights. We're as good as anybody. And Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> it's the last blast of Zero to Hero Weekend tonight on Disney. Movies are at 7, 6 Central. Come on, everybody, you gotta watch us now. Whole new world to see, just breaking now. Wanna see action, something for everyone. Wanna share the magic, just come on, it's kind of fun. On Disney, it's a world of imagination. On Disney, it's a magic celebration.
Mike, it's two movies on Magical World of Disney. Which witchcraft would win? Which witchcraft? Or kid witchcraft? Witches have flying brooms. Kids have flying food. Witches' fingers can zap. Kids' fingers can glow. You be the judge, as Disney brings you two magical movies, Hocus Pocus and Escape to Witch Mountain, tomorrow night on Magical World of Disney. Movies every night at 7, 6 central. And now, back to Inside Out. How long did it take to bake that big cake? Well, Walt Disney World artists worked 11 weeks and used 430 gallons of pink paint, 1,110 feet of inflatable icing, and hundreds of giant candy pieces to create the 185-foot centerpiece for the Magic Kingdom's anniversary party. You seen him? No, I keep looking for him. He's nowhere to be found, though. I'm sure he's working hard. We'll find him. Oh, boy. Fountains are one of the simple pleasures here at Walt Disney World, and this one's called Leapfrog Fountain. Just out of Journey into Imagination here at Epcot. This fountain squirts near-perfect streams of water that they sort of resemble glass rods. The water begins at one end of the arrangement and leaps in precise succession from planner to planner, even hopping over the heads of guests. So if you want to sound smart, which actually I like to do from time to time, you can call this technology by its proper name, Axisymmetrical Laminar Fluid Flow. Yes, that's it. <laughs> but no matter what you call it, kids love it. Perhaps the most elaborate and spectacular fountain in the park is right here at Interventions. It contains, are you ready for this, almost 109,000 gallons of water, which are propelled 150 feet into the air. And if the sheer size of this place isn't impressive enough, every 15 minutes, the jets are choreographed into a remarkable water ballet. All of these fountains capture the energy and the exhilaration of Walt Disney World in water. I don't know, it's sort of like an all singing, all dancing, all wet excitement. Now, let's get a way inside out point of view with teen reporter Talia Osteen. Well, this is it, my first day on the job. Can you believe it? I've been waiting for this day for so long. And now, finally, I'm here at Walt Disney World to find the extra special, amazing way inside out stuff. You know, what we really want to know about. First assignment, find water. Come on, let's go. Wow, this place is so big, but there are a lot of ways to get around. Oh, great, Typhoon Lagoon. I know what my first tip's gonna be. Before you walk into Typhoon Lagoon, put your shoes on. As soon as you get here, take it from me. You gotta get a hair wrap and a tattoo. Look, dolphins, aren't they cute? It gets that tropical thing happening. Ooh, big adventure. Swimming with real live sharks in the shark reef. Now, if you don't wanna get this close, you can climb into the shipwreck and get a fish's eye view. Castaway Creek, the place to chill out. Oh, by the way, most people get out at the Shark Reef, so the best place to get in is the snail entrance, where there's not a lot of people, but a lot of empty rafts. That's Miss Tilly over there. She overlooks Typhoon Lagoon. She blows a stack every half hour, so it's a good way to keep track of time. Oops, gotta go. Hey, look at me, cruising in my water sprite. Okay, it's not a yacht, but hey, it's a start. Oh, there's River Country. That's where I heard they're having that all-American water party. They say to get a really big splash, you have to let go at just the right time. Let's see. Here's something way inside. Check out this Epcot drinking fountain. You've never seen a talking water fountain before. Looks like cool-off time at the Disney Village Marketplace. Now let me show you something way inside. 
This fountain makes the shape of Mickey's head. Very impressive. Okay, all right. There's one more water park that I have to check out. I made it to Blizzard Beach. These are the runoff rabbits. You can go with your friends and get some sun. But if you want the real rush, go down the pitch black tubes. But you have to go alone. Oh, no! Ah! Well, we made it to Summit Plummet, 120 feet straight down. But you can't chicken out, or you gotta take the walk of shame past these guys. So you gotta grit your teeth and take the plunge. Because it's way inside out! George. Wow. Oh. Disney's own Junk and New can get a beach party going wherever they play. And they're playing right here at Typhoon Lagoon. Check it out. Today we're gonna have to come again. Nobody ain't gonna give you nothing, no, baby. I wondered what it would be like to dive in Epcot's living seas, and today, I finally got the chance in the unique Disney water adventure, Dive Quest. Our class of certified divers was greeted by an instructor who briefed us on the sea life we were about to encounter. We looked so chic in our wetsuits. The staff made Sorry, sure we were properly we equipped for the dive. <laughs> Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Gotta get used to the swim vent. Okay, now what? Okay, time to take the plunge. Well, suddenly I was surrounded by more tropical fish and other exotic water life than I had ever seen. We surveyed the seas and the artificial coral reef. We did a lot of waving to camera, too. The dive lasted about half an hour, so we had plenty of time to explore. Well, now I know what it's like to be on the other side of the glass of the living seas. And it was quite an experience for all of us. In March of next year, the Disney Magic, the very first ship designed and operated by the dream makers at Disney, will set sail. And when it does, a number of historic precedents will be set. You know, in so many ways, this ship will be unlike any other afloat. Its uniqueness starts with the design of the ship, with its classic exterior lines. It will evoke the golden age of cruising. 
As for the inside, one man who plays an important role is Cliff Perry, director of entertainment for the new Disney Cruise Line. Hi, J.D., good to see you. Good to see you, Cliff. I gotta tell you, this is one beautiful boat. Ship. Yeah, we carry boats. You landlubbers never get it. It's a ship. A ship. Okay, what can I expect to see on this beautiful ship? Well, it's so unique, it's been purposely built for children, adults, and families. That's nice. Now, what if I'm out to sea, I'm enjoying myself, but yet, you know, I want to see some sports, because I can't be away from sports? ESPN for too long. I, I actually think we can handle it. What do you think this is here? It, these are funnels. Yeah, that one is. This one is the ESPN Skybox, the only sports bar at sea High atop, there we are in the funnel of the ship. Now you're talking, because I can't miss Sports Center, you know? So you can actually watch the games right from here? That's correct. Uh, all right, Cliff, what's next? The Ocean is Lab and Club. 15,000 square feet of children's dedicated space. This is 10 times bigger than anything else that's out in any liner in the world right now. So the kids can just play in this whole area all day long? It's just meant to be fun and imagination. That's what we're best at. Well, here we are, J.D., at the Walt Disney Theater. 970-seat theater top Broadway production-style shows, and as for technology, the most advanced theater ever been put to see. In fact, I think it challenges Broadway. It's that good. Wow, and what about this? This is the Rockin' Bar D. This is uh, one of our nightclubs in our nighttime entertainment complex where we have sessions and a comedy club, but this one is a dance club where you're going to have rock and roll, country and western, right through to the wee small hours with a resident DJ, of course. I love it. So, Cliff, is the ship going to be making any stops along the way? Yes, it is, J.D. It's going to stop in Nassau in the Bahamas, then it's going to go to our own Bahamian paradise, Castaway Key, our own private island. It's got three great beaches. It's got one for adults, one for the families, one for sports activities. It's unbelievable. But before we go any further, I'm going to show you some amazing footage which will support what is unique about this truly great ship, the Disney Magic. One of the most unique qualities of the Disney Magic is the way in which it was constructed. In fact, it was built in two sections the shipyards over 100 miles apart. The bow was constructed at Fincantieri Shipyard in Ancona. Then it was towed by barge for 42 hours across the Adriatic Sea to a point near the entrance to the Venice Canals. There, the two halves were joined in a complex operation, never before performed on a cruise ship. The Disney Cruise Line's unique approach to ship construction is only one example of the many innovations that will be introduced on board the Disney Magic when it all comes together early next year. Welcome to George's Mailbag. I got one. Come on, Robbie, let's hear it. Peter from Nebraska has learned to water ski recently and doesn't get a chance to practice at his home. He is wondering if he'll be able to water ski the next time he visits Walt Disney World. Hmm. There's a fantastic place to practice your water skiing technique while at Walt Disney World, Peter. Make a reservation to water ski on Bay Lake. Terry from Colorado Springs, Colorado, is wondering which pool is the biggest and deepest. Well, Terry, the deepest pool at Walt Disney World can be found at River Country. It is 10 feet deep. The largest pool is the Wave Pool at Typhoon Lagoon, which also holds the title of largest wave pool in the world. Check this one out, George. Let's hear it. Eric from Fargo, North Dakota, likes to fish and is wondering if you know of any good places to go fishing around Walt Disney World. Yes, there are plenty of places and opportunity to go fishing while at Walt Disney World, Eric. Both Bay Lake by Fort Wilderness and the Seven Seas Lagoon at Magic Kingdom. So, go fishing. So long from another edition of George's Mailbag. Bye-bye. <laughs> Here's what's coming up at Walt Disney World. Start this celebration early. Don't miss the blast off to the fort. Fourth of July fireworks start at 12.01 a.m. on July 3rd at Pleasure Island. Don't forget to check out Disney's newest Hercules Zero to Hero Victory Parade running twice daily at the Disney MGM Studios. On July 6th, check out country music star Travis Trent as he performs in concert on the Pleasure Island's West End stage. On August 1st, Disney's newest resort and convention center, Coronado Springs, opens. It's themed to the American Southwest in Mexico. Later this year, from October 16th to 19th, the Walt Disney World Oldsmobile Golf Classic tees off at the Palm, Magnolia, and Lake Buena Vista Golf Courses. I had an awesome time, but I hate to say this, that's about it for today's show from the watery world of Disney. Yeah, but is this the coolest place or what? Yeah, what do you think, big guy? I love this. This is the life. <laughs> uh-huh. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time for another Inside Out Summer Edition. Absolutely. Hey, you guys, how about a race on the Double Dipper? Oh, please, I can take you with my eyes closed. Oh, yeah, dream on, Water Boy. Come on, George, let's yeah. go. <laughs> right behind you. Here's your juice, Mr. Foreman. Oh, thank you. You're welcome.